Hey, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us here with uh, another episode of uh, the Progressive Marketer. Uh, I am Ron Maddox, and I am joined by... I'm Josh Sherrods. Yeah, so, um, hey, Josh, we, you know, how's it, uh, how's it going at home here? Not bad, not bad. I... You could tell I missed the office so much that I had to had to find something. I had to find some other location. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'll have to do that next time. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, lots going on. Uh, lots going on in the world here still. With all the all the stuff. But uh, we're talking about uh, account based marketing today, particularly in why it's a good fit for uh, manufacturers. So, um, yeah, so I'll tell you what, Josh, you know, what, what, what is account-based marketing? Okay, so I'll give you the definition first and then we'll, we'll, we'll boil it down real quick. So it's basically, it's a B2B strategy. And what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate your sales and marketing resources instead of just throwing a net out there on a clearly defined set of target accounts. Um, we're going to employ personalized messaging campaigns and built around messaging that's speaking to the specific attributes and needs of the accounts you're targeting. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, we're basically, words. what's that? Yeah, yeah, put that in human words. <laughs> in human words, instead of just throwing information out there and hoping that someone stumbles across it, we're going to decide who we want to work with or who you want to work with as a manufacturing company. What are their problems and how are we going to put together a campaign to meet that specific company or contacts that specific company's specific problems rather than just hope that a medical device company stumbles across us. Let's figure out which medical device company we want and how do we go after them? Yeah. Perfect. So that said, um, there's quite a few benefits to this, Ron. You want to talk about those for a few minutes? Yeah. Um, and yeah. And these benefits um, aren't that I'm going to go down through here. Yeah, they're not made up. These actually have come from several studies um, and uh, over the past several years and they've, pretty consistent uh, each time. So a couple of them, uh, efficiency, you know, you're going to be focusing uh, your time and resources on the specific number of accounts um, that have a better chance at driving revenue. So revenue uh, means big wins. Um, on average, uh, not only are you bringing in deals, the deals tend to be higher uh, in their overall amount. Um, engagement, um, it's the quickest way to start engaging, uh, being able to take and engage with decision makers and, you know, and those on the C-suite level. Close rates tend to be higher, um, tend to take and move things through the sales cycle faster. Um, better alignment between sales and marketing. Um, a lot of times there's, you know, sales is saying marketing isn't giving them good leads. Marketing is saying, hey, you know, you're not following up on these leads. Uh, ABM is a great way to take and tie those two teams together. Um, and uh, opportunities um, tends to take and lead to more face-to-face -face opportunities. And we know when talking to all our clients and their sales teams, they're like, just get us in front of somebody and we'll close the deal. ABM, it can do that. And, um, customer experience, because you're focusing in on specific uh, accounts, um, you're able to take and uh, be a, uh, uh, they feel more, it feels more personalized to them. Um, and because you're offering them a lot of value up front in your targeted marketing and that uh, they feel, you know, there's a, there's a customer satisfaction component. to it too. And then account expansion. And so uh, this tends to lead to more and more opportunities. Um, so you can expand your footprint. Uh, once you got that win, um, this tends to, uh, ABM tends to lead to uh, creating, uh, having a bigger footprint with those uh, accounts too. So that probably sounds good to a lot of people. Um, and next question might be, well, how, how do I get started doing it? That's a great question. Uh, well, the first thing, and, and one of the biggest things is you need buy-in on this across the board from executive level to your sales team. Um, it, this can't be something that one person says, oh, hey, I'm gonna try this. The, the really, the, as, as, as you mentioned, I mean, trying to, to tie your sales and your marketing together here is going to take some buy-in on um, from top right on down level. Um, 
you need to clearly define the targeted accounts. Who do you want to work with? And prioritize those accounts into tiers. And that's tiers of best fit. Um, best fit for what your ideal customers are going to be in terms of size, in terms of what they're manufacturing, in terms of annual revenue, in terms of you name it. Um, coordinate those sales and that marketing effort and make sure you assign who's doing what to, to make sure that no balls are dropped in this. And um, another, another key piece here is make sure the right technologies are in place to execute campaigns and major engagement with those targeted accounts. This is sort of why ABMs come pop, become popular again in an era where you can see exactly who's clicking on things, what companies are, are finding you on LinkedIn or in clicking your ads, what, what's going on, how, how effective or non-effective things are with those real-time analytics. You can really measure what's going on a bit better than you could in, in, uh, in past days. Yeah. yeah so the, that the said- tools, I was gonna say those tools, that? Made me think, you know, uh, like the tools we were talking about here the last time that um, mm -hmm. manufacturers can put on their sites and um, be able to see who's coming, you know, what companies are showing Absolutely. up. Yeah. Yeah. Right down to, yeah, because of their IP addresses, right down to exactly who's on your site, what pages are they on, how long are they on. And those are tools that, that we can we can help out with at, at no charge to, to get on those manufacturers' websites. Yep. Um, so that said, what's the basic process for using ABM? That's, I mean, we, we, we know why it's great. We know what we need to get started. So how do we do it? Yeah, you're going to need a framework to take and operate within. Um, and that framework, we use the acronym T-E-A-M, just like it's spelled. First one, T, target. Uh, that's going to be you select the accounts um, and uh, which ones uh, you want to take and prioritize that align with uh, your criteria for what's going to be a high priority one versus a mid priority versus a low priority. So you got that, you got, you, you, you line that out, target who that's going to be. The next is going to be engage. And this is going to, this is where you're using your marketing channels uh, in order to try and spark some kind of engagement you know, with that target account. So one way to take and do that would be, okay, put ads out there. And we want to take and target those ads through LinkedIn to this specific tier one company or these tier one companies here, medical device, aerospace, you know. Um, and then when you see uh, looking at, you know, tools we mentioned here earlier, you know, if they come to the site. Well, then uh, that's sparking some sort of engagement. Obviously, you'd love them to come fill out a form and say yes to contact me. But most people don't come to a website, you know, ready to take and buy, especially, you know, high dollar numbers. Anyway. Um, so you engage them, um, once you got a signal from them that there's some kind of interest, this is activate, that's a, and that's where you notify, you know, the sales team say, hey, listen, we've got some people that are interested, you know, they've been coming to the site from company a over here. Uh, then you can use something like LinkedIn navigator to, to narrow down, uh, who that might be based on their activity, what page do they go. The, on the website and now sales has uh, a list of names that they can reach out to at that company and um, talk more so you can get a conversation going uh, about to, to gauge, you know, how interested they are in where they're at in the buying process and all that. And then the last one's M, measure. Um, so that's going to be, you're going to use again, a different set of software tools to take and measure the engagement uh, by targeted accounts um, you're going to want to see, you know, what's their, you'd be able to take and measure their level of interest. Um, and then ultimately what opportunities has uh, this whole process created and then, you know, eventually be able to take and track revenue for the deals you've closed. So, so, you know, you get this general framework and everything we've talked about here. Uh, why is it perfect for manufacturing? Well, it's it's meant for business to business, and it's easy to scale efforts to those resources and to the resources that you have to to work with. Yeah, for one. Yeah, yeah. It, of course, you know we we mentioned it several times. It's easy to take an idea of the target companies you want to work with, um, and um, you know be able to take and tier and prioritize them. So most people know who they want to take and work with. <laughs> I, I, one would hope. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this this aligns sales and marketing, um, which is a problem that many companies have, and gives them a, a joint purpose. So it's not just okay, you you guys are forced to work together a bit more. This is it it, it sort of creates um, a little bit easier time for those two to see a common goal here. 
Yep. Yeah. And kind of along with that, uh, on the, you can see tangible ROI from the marketing efforts and, um, you know, when things go bad and of course right now, you know, where everybody's in a, in a tough spot, one degree or another, um, the first thing you start to cut away from is your marketing. And, um, uh, you largely do that because you're like, well, you know, that's the easiest one to cut from in terms of, you know, you don't quite see the tangible value and what it is that are doing. If you're out there just blanket marketing, um, then chances are you're not seeing a lot, but with the targeted end of things, then um, there's a higher chance of being able to take and actually see that tangible ROI from your marketing efforts. So uh, once you've got that, you might, and you see those results, you might not be as likely to want to cut out, cut away from your marketing budget when they're bringing value to the, to the organization. There, so. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. that's basically it. Um, we, there's several blogs that we have more details on this. And I think we, we've actually got a full presentation. Um, we do. On, yeah. How to take a structural thing out. And we'll, uh, when this is posted, we'll leave uh, links to those resources uh, right under, underneath the video somewhere where there's text. Great. Great. Well, and, and please note, if you have any questions along, along the way on this, feel free to reach out to us. We'll, we'll help any way we can. Yep. So, well, hey, Josh. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for the time. Uh, hey, I'll let you as get well. Back to the, yeah, I'll let you get back to the factory there. Yeah, I've got a car to build back here. Yeah. <laughs>